When you go into marriage, hoping that your spouse will meet your need, a need that God is meant to meet, you are the one that will spoil that marriage. Adam in Eden had everything he needed. So you see, Adam had no need. If you are going to make a good husband or a good wife, you must come to this spiritual place. A place where God is everything you need. Where God is, is the one you look up to for everything you need. Where God is your sufficiency. The respect he needs from his wife is there. The love from his wife is there. The self-control he needs is there. The forgiveness he needs is there. Everything he needs is right there in Eden. So you see, Adam had no need. Marriages are destroyed today because needy people go into marriage. They have no Eden. No Eden at all. They are expecting their spouse to be their Eden. So you see, they make a demand on a man what only God is meant to provide. And that's how they spoil their marriage. Adam did not need a man, a woman, to respect him, to feel like I am respected. He had Eden. As a woman, you don't need a man to show you love, to feel loved. Paul said, we are not sufficient in ourselves. He said, God is our sufficiency. God must be everything you need. As a woman, you don't program your head that I'm hoping to marry a rich man that will meet all my needs and carry all the problems of my family. Why? Come into Eden where you have everything. Where you have the sufficiency required to take care of your siblings. To take care of yourself. Don't come to, into somebody's life with a body. Come as a blessing. When it, you come with your body, it comes with your body. With his own body. Then both of you are sharing bodies. Then you are expecting him to meet your need. He is expecting you to meet a need. Both of you cannot meet each other's needs. That's how marriages scatter. That very reason that makes you think you need to marry. That is the very thing you need to go and develop. That satisfaction you want from a relationship, you can get it from God. When you get it from God, when you get married, you don't become a parasite to your spouse. You need to have that completeness. That was says, for ye are complete in him. This mindset that he is my better half. I don't know where you got that mindset from. Which half? Half of what? So you are half. Eh? You are half. You need him to make you complete. Abi? So when he makes you complete, what will happen to him? You'll be empty now. That's just practical. Right? The Bible says, one will chase a thousand, not half. One, we chase what? A thousand. When two come together, they chase ten thousand. Do as you are on your own. You must have, you must be complete. You don't need to marry to be this. I hope you know that. These are things that people are getting to their head and they miss out. Was Paul married? Was Jesus married? Was Daniel married? I hope you know that Daniel was castrated in, uh, in, in Persia. And yet, Daniel went to change the world. Today, we are seeing it from Daniel. You don't need to marry to fit destiny. Become complete in yourself. When a, when a complete person marries a complete person, what will happen? Both of them will come together and chase 10,000. But half, married half, both of them, when they come together, one, when one is chasing 1,000, the other one is chasing zero. Your partner is not there to meet your need. He is not your provider. God is your provider. All the affection you need, all the care you need, look up to God first for it. Don't make demands. Don't marry your wife so you can clean your house and cook your food. It's not correct. Be complete in yourself. Don't make demands. For we are complete in Him who is the head of our principal and power. You are a complete person. You are not half. You don't need half to make your life okay. Your life is meant to be okay before you marry. While you are still in marriage, your life should be okay. When you come to me and they say, I need you, I can't live without you, run. That is a parasite. You see, a parasite cannot live outside its host. We are there to suck your life out of you. We are not there to be a blessing. How do you say without you, I cannot live? Baba. Yes, I love you. It's true, you should love. And what does it mean to love? I want to be a blessing. And if you say, don't be a blessing to me again, then what's the matter? I will go and bless somebody else, right? 
But says, no, I need you. Without you, my life is finished. <laughs> you are the sugar in my tea, Abba. But I can get your sugar from God. <laughs> I hope you know that there is no point that can continue to miss your needs. Even your parents. If you get to a level, they will say, we can't take this anymore. Go and earn a living. So when you continue to look up to man to meet your need, you, are, you will destroy that man. You will destroy that marriage. Be complete. Come with your Eden. Let her come with her own Eden. Then when you come together, you have a big forest. A, a, a mighty forest of gardens. So that when you come to her, they say they love you. Be careful. You need to watch their heart. Are they coming to give or they are coming to take? When you see a taker, that they are the ones that have that kind of mindset. That without you, I, if I don't marry you, there is nobody on earth that can marry. Wrong. That's a parasite. That's a sick person. He's a juvenile. He cannot stand on his own. He is sick. I need somebody to, to support him so he can, he can live. 